Here, they want to hear some Back to the Future stories. Okay. Uh, it is simply put one of the great all time uh, pieces of American cinema. I feel like it's in the Library of Congress, it has to be, right? Oh, do you know what? It's I think it is. Yeah, it has to I be. I think it part is. The National Archives yes, as like a perfect piece of Americana. Absolutely. Um, so, congratulations. Thank I you. I might be making that up, but it sounds you know, like I, I right? think it's true. It sounds like that has to be true. I have to say, hi, Instagram people. Hi Instagram, hi Facebook, if we're still streaming. We're streaming on Instagram. We're streaming on Instagram? Yeah. Okay. No. Facebook. Sorry, hi Facebook people. I it's couldn't okay. I couldn't figure out how to do it it's on okay. Instagram. Facebook owns Instagram, so oh, they did. That's right. it's the same corporate daddy. So hello yeah. at the Claudia Wells. Um uh so all right. uh, um, As, um back to the future. Back to the future. Uh, it has been, oh boy, 34. 35 years next year. Yeah, 35, 35 years since you shot it, I guess in 84, uh, right? Uh, uh, no. No, you shot it in 85? No, we shot it in 85. Oh, wow. In Fast fact, they around. edited while we were filming because I think they, it, it, we shot, I think, I think, April yeah. of 85 and it debuted July 3rd of 85. I just found the newspaper clippings my mother saved. Oh boy. The front page of the LA Times saying sneak preview June 29th, oh, 1985, wow. this new movie, Back to the Future. It wasn't called uh, the Spaceman from Pluto? Not at that point. Yeah. Do you guys know that story? Yeah, this guy knows that story. They, 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 I'm sure you know the story as well. That's what, I forget the executive's name. Len something, I want to say, was an executive uh, at the at the studio level, who didn't like the name Back to the Future and sent a memo to Steven Spielberg suggesting that we think this will find more traction with audiences if we call it Space Man from Pluto because of the scene where Marty dresses up in the, the suits and the, with the thing. I'm you know, That's right. It makes that uh, crispin. And so in the ultimate troll move, Spielberg, instead of acknowledging it as this is one of the worst executive suggestions I've ever heard, this is Steven Spielberg, writes back, thank you so much for your joke. It made everyone over here laugh really hard. Brilliant. Brilliant response. Brilliant. I have to remember that one. Yeah. <clears throat> when someone gives you a piece of advice that bad, just say thank you for your joke. We're all cracking up over I love here. That. Love your sense of humor. Do you know what they say in the South? What's that? Bless your heart. Bless you. Bless his heart. Oh. Um, all right. So back to the future. Yes. Um, back to back to the back future. to back to the future. Uh, you know, I feel like you and I have talked about it before on stage. So I'm going to put our audience on the spot. Did you guys have back to the future questions for Claudia? Oh, that's you would like great. to ask me before I, I just launch into my own. Anyone? Don't be shy. Throw a hand up. No. Not one? I feel like you do. I feel like you're on the fence. Are you trying to Marty? <laughs> I guess not. All right. Well, then I'll ask. Okay. Um, so I know the casting process was yes. quite a thing on yes. this movie because there were so many recastings. Of course, uh, now everyone knows that Eric Stoltz, who we all know and love. Big secret. It was big secret He's done time. very well for himself, so it's not one of those, hey, this guy you never heard of stories. Uh, but Eric Stoltz was, of course, the original Marty. Marty McFly yep. for several weeks. When I was Jennifer, he was Marty. He was Marty. Yeah. Yeah. And he and I knew each other because we took Stella Adler's acting class together. Ooh. When he first moved to LA to be an actor and he had long, stringy red hair. Yeah, when he was in Fast Times. He, the movie. Before that, I think. No. Well, no, he had the long hair in Fast Times. That's right. That was right when he came back. Yeah. To, came to LA from Santa Barbara. It's all connected, guys. <laughs> 11 actors. Not kidding. The, Absolutely true. Uh, so he got the part and I got the part. Uh -huh. And I only had one audition. One audition? One audition. Good Lord. My first audition and only audition, I walked in. Steven Spielberg was there. Bob Zemeckis, the director, uh, producer. Bob Gale, the director, producer. Neil Canton, the producer. Kathy, da da da. And the, the two people who run Amblin. Uh, Kathy, Kathleen Kathy Kennedy, Kennedy, and the gentleman who's 
name I can't remember. I thought it was Spielberg, but not. Spielberg was, no, but there's a Kathleen Kennedy, Kennedy and, oh, right, and, right, and the guy who I think recently retired. I think you're right. Excuse my nails. Hey, who's got a Back to the Future poster handy? They oh, have written on that. That's smart. Um, um, What's her name? Fox, one of the casting directors who became a huge, cute, wonderful girl. Um, um, Fed and find her, casting people. Okay. And I think there was one or two others. And then a cameraman okay. with a tripod and a video camera. Wow. Oh, of course they shot on VHS. Probably, yeah. yeah. And then the guy who was auditioning with me at the same time for Marty, it was his 11th callback. Can you imagine? And, it, and he didn't get it, did he? No, but... Do we know who that was? I don't remember his name, but they made him the drummer in the band scene. Ah, where I'm with Marty. Consolation Prize. Consolation Prize. And he might be doing shows now. He might be. Honest being to God, drummer. the residuals he would have gotten from just that one or two days of work... Quite good. Would have lasted him a year or two. One day of work. One day of work. Yeah. That's all I'll say. So they're all in there, and then Stephen kicked out the cameraman, and he said, I'm so sorry, but you're going to have to go because I can't have a camera here that I'm not operating. Spielberg said that? He did. Wild. So the guy's like, and he goes, no, I'm serious. So he walked out. Okay. And then Spielberg went behind the camera, and then we did the scene that Marty and Lorraine do in the car in the back seat while she's drinking and smoking that was in the, the parking lot. That was audition That was my audition scene. Had they not finished writing the script? The script was a secret, and I think they wanted something with a lot of meat in it. Sure. To see my skills. To your chops. To see my chops. Yeah. And it was so much fun. Oh, I'll And bet. we did it tons of times. And uh -huh. then Steven said, I want you to go outside and run the line so fast like you're on a radio show. And then whenever you're ready, you come back in. Crazy. So we did. And he loved it. And then he started asking me all these personal questions. He, Steven, or Steven, he, the other actor? The only, the only conversation that ever took place for two hours wow. was Steven and me. Wow. Not a single question to the guy. No one else spoke. And it was just he and I talking as if we were the only two people in the room. It's because he knew how important the casting of Jennifer was. It was amazing. So he would ask me these questions and I'd say, you cannot tell my mom. If I tell you the answer to this, do not tell my mom. I won't. No, I mean promise. I'll get in big trouble. You cannot tell my mom. And he's like, I promise. So he would ask me all these questions. And then um, after, I don't know, an hour and a half, he said, oh dear, the camera's been rolling this whole time. Uh, I mean, you can't show anybody. You have nope. to promise. Nope. But he was the, that's the only time I ever met him or saw him. That's wild. Yeah. He was amazing, so nice. Yeah, but he knew that the Jennifer Parker role was so important because it's it's everybody has to know this is what Marty needs to get back to 1985 for. He's got the greatest girl in the world waiting for him. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thanks. Yeah. So we that maybe that yeah because he really spent time getting to know it sounds me. Sounds like it. Yeah. And but Jennifer really was yeah. me, my yeah. character. Like I think it's similar to another person here at this con, like Buttercup in Princess Bride. Which I screened, I screened well, as. Of course you did. Because there were 11 actors, so of course you were screened as for everything. Um, but that's, it's so important to cast these, these female roles in these iconic 80s movies because it's like, hey, this needs to be the dream girl. we got to get the right dream girl. Thank you. Otherwise, uh, our, our lead actor, people are going to be like, oh, oh, oh. But no, you got to get back. Got to get back. Back girl. to the future. Got to get back for Jennifer Parker. The Thank you. Um, so, <clears throat> 1985, movie comes out, uh, and then you got to revisit the role of Jennifer Parker. I did. Uh, some years later, like a couple times now, by my 30 mind, years later. Three times for several of the Back of the Future video games. Yes, I did. Lending your wonderful voice talents. Thank you. How did that come about? I was at the 25th, okay, so it was 25 years. I was at the 25th anniversary party right. in Chapman Under the Sea Dance for Back to the Future. Oh, boy. Which was so much fun. Yeah. In fact, that's where I met Mayor Goldie Wilson for the very first time. Who then made me my customer at my store, and I changed his life from Ross Dress for Less to Armani and Prada and Gucci, and he's one of my greatest like friends. Sound of it. <laughs> so, uh, as I'm leaving the party, I hear this Jennifer, Jennifer, uh, uh, Claudia, and I'm like, who's calling me? And it was this sweet little skinny tiny kid who goes, I'm Marty, I mean AJ, and I'm gonna be Marty in the 
in this movie, it, well, no, it's a, it's a game. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And so he explained to me, he's in the video game, uh, playing Marty. Yeah. And I said, well, is Jennifer in that? Did they cast her? And he goes, no. I said, I want to be Jennifer. He goes, you do? I said, of course I do. I said, tell them. And then tell them to contact me. Here's my card. And I gave him my store card. <laughs> Thought nothing more of it because everyone says they're going to do something and la, 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 yeah. la. Three weeks later, I get a call from the producer. Would you like to be in our video game, Telltale video game series? I said, of course I do. I said, how come you guys didn't call me? He said, we just never thought you would want to do it. I'm like, how could I not want to be Jennifer again? So I went and did it, and it was an incredible experience. And Jennifer was kind of a, a, a punk unusual, different, tough girl, not in love with Michael. She's in love with this other guy, and then again, she falls in love with Michael. Is this an alternate 1985? Yes. Yeah. And you know, I've had some tough times in my life, so I got to bring a little, you know, um, to Sweetheart Jennifer, and um, it, was an, it, was, it was a dream come true experience. Aww. It was a completely fulfilling and lifting. Uh-huh. What she did there? That's twice. Somebody called the OED. <laughs> Experience. Yeah, I was. I think God is just so kind to bless me oh, that way. I really do. That is wonderful. Yeah. yeah, it's so that's such a wonderful little little coda, you know, a little refrain yes. from where you started. Yes. Uh, Thirty four years ago. Tapped it. Yeah. Tapped it. It was lovely, and now we get to do this, and Back to the Future lives forever, and the really does. fans live forever, and the generations yeah. continue the love. And it's like a, a love fest family that have something in common yeah. that live all over the world. Yep. It's really an indescribable joy and pleasure and kindness. It's a, a realm of joy, happiness that the whole wide world gets to share. And then we all get to be connected. And it shows like this. We get to meet in person and have relationship and have uh, back and forth. And I've got friends on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter that I've never met before, but I consider them you know, part of my yeah. inner circle because there's communication every single day because of Back to the Future, because I got to be Jennifer. Amazing. It's amazing. It's, amazing. it's a beautiful That's part of my life. That's the power of art. That's the power of love. Yeah, yeah. look at that. You Woo. can't pay for transitions like that, folks. <laughs> you can't. It's a lifting. Yes. Does anyone have questions for our guest, Miss Claudia Wells? Anyone at all? Don't be shy. I don't want to rob the audience. Hi, Kato. Hi. I, I heard you were here. Oh, good. I didn't think you heard me. No, I did. It, uh, this beautiful girl has a question. Hi. Well, oh, I thought you wanted me. I'm sorry. Kato, I know you're always full of questions. I love the shoes. They match with the shirt brilliantly, which blends with the blazer. I got them at Armani Wells. Boom. Boom. Store. I do. On Ventura Boulevard. That's right. In Studio City. City. Armoneywells.com to schedule your yep. appointment. All right. Well, if you guys don't have any questions, yeah, it's, do you? It's okay if you don't because there's other Super fan, Chris. You don't have a question? Now. I'm astounded. That's all right. I have a question then. Okay. okay. Go for it, Kato. You know, but it's like you, when you're on a movie set. I do. You're, you're Jennifer Parker. Uh, at the time that you're doing the film, are you in a relationship or do you want to almost get started on the set with somebody? Crew or actor for you. That's it. Oh, did that just contribute? Did you touch the bottom? Of it? I guess your mic just got Hello. turned off by that question. That's funny. I get it doesn't need to. I'm not writing anything. Knock, knock. Ooh. Okay, so I was very, very shy. I wasn't dating anybody. Um, even Michael actually wanted me to go hear him play the guitar at some little restaurant or something on a Saturday don't night. Blame him. Uh, it was called my room. <laughs> no. And I said yes, but then I went home and I was so shy. And my mom said, You can't just go out like that. I said, Well, I told him yes. And she said, Well, I tell you no. And I was like, okay. And I stayed home. Then Monday, he goes, I thought you were going to be at the whatever restaurant hear me play. What happened? And I was so shy, I just was quiet. He goes, why didn't you come? And I was just like, 
I just looked at him. I just literally was, I was too embarrassed to say my mom wouldn't let me. And I just, um, he, he wanted to have lunch with me once, and that's exactly when Matt Laberto, Albert from Little Boat House on the Prairie, popped by. And I was too shy to say to Matt, well, I was just about to have lunch with Michael, so I just didn't. And he's like, where were you? And I didn't really say anything. I was just shy. I, 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 in fact, I went to the high school prom with a friend. Now, it's been 34 years. Have you explained to Michael J. Fox since then what happened? <laughs> No, but I told you guys. Well, and by the way, I used to get word to him. I need him to know that it, she didn't just have a change. It wasn't my fault. Yeah, it was my mother's fault. Mom, yeah. no. Yes. But um, it wasn't that he was trying to have a relationship with me or flirting. We were literally—it was a friendship thing. Yeah. I don't think anyone necessarily at that time would have even broached the idea of a relationship with me because I was. Uh, I uh, wasn't. Uh, We've all seen the movie. That is nonsense you're talking right now. When the camera is rolling, uh -huh. my inside non shyness had no problem coming out. But only when I was acting, yeah. which I wasn't. So my acting was parts of me that I held in okay. in life, in every show I did. All right. So that, okay, but it that was my freedom. Fair enough. But it's very clear to me now, and I've had the great pleasure of knowing you the last several years. You are quite the opposite of a shy introvert. Very true. And it seems like, I mean, for me, it seems hard to imagine you being any other way. So when in your life did you become more outgoing? You are a very good questioner. Thank you. You're welcome. I went through so many transitions in my life. Um, when my mother was sick and during those years, I went through a lot of questioning times. Then I ended up living in other places and just being like a normal person. Like I taught myself how to watch a movie as an audience member, not as a person wondering what camera angles and how the acting was. And I, um, I spent years never telling anyone I was an actress, even in my store, even people I did date. Oh. I had a guy come into my store that I had been dating, yeah. and he said, you never told me you were an actress, you were on television last night. I said, you never asked? I was Claudia Wells, the store owner. Sure. So in that transition, I found my voice. I found who I am, what I like, what I believe, whose I am, and I became me in life, not just when the camera's rolling. There it is. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm, uh, I, I learned also that I'm a very strong person with a, an excellent business mind. And that, um, you know, I'm an only parent to my son. So, you know, the roughness of life sharpens the edges. It's like uh, iron sharpens iron. And even um, when you put metal in the furnace at the highest heat, yeah. the, the impurities come up to the top. If you scooch them out, then you've got pure gold. So my life has had a lot of furnacing. Hello. And I have become more of who I was meant to be through all of those sure. experiences. That's wonderful. It's always nice to know uh, that the, the hard experiences really do make us who we are. stronger yes. people in Absolutely. the Absolutely. You know, when you squeeze something, the yeah. inside comes out. You squeeze a grape, you yeah. find out what's inside. When life squeezes you tight and things are very difficult, who you actually are shows and becomes. And I think that's a good uh, 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 a lesson to learn because especially in this room in the convention world, so many people are fans. And, you know, oftentimes you and I meet very shy, very introverted people. You know, there are 
was uh, too embarrassed, to ask questions, too embarrassed to speak up, say what they want to say at a table or whatever. And it's nice to see someone say, oh no, I was too embarrassed, Absolutely. I was too shy, I couldn't do it. And yet here you are today, one of the most outgoing, pleasant, delightful people. Thank you. Um, so it is, uh, it is never uh, a bad thing to grow and change. Uh, one last question for you oh, to wrap up. We have a question. We have a right question. We have another question. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Kato. He wanted to be squeezed like a grape. <laughs> no, what is your question? So, um, Claudia has a store, right? Armani Wells. Armani Wells. All right. So, Claudia, I have to ask, when did you open up that store, and does it have an anniversary? That was a loaded question. He's been in my store. Um, I opened it December 19th, 1991. On December 19th, 2019, I'll be 28 years old in the same location. Oh, wow. Yes. That's a pretty good anniversary. Thank you for asking. December 19th, that's the uh, same day Titanic opened in 1997. Wow. Yeah, it's weird that I know that, folks. Cried three times. <laughs> three times. I wanted to say something about what I was saying before, yes. because it's something I live on and I stand on and I learned it through a lot of, of difficult experiences but there's a verse that's Romans 8 28 and it's called all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes so when I think of that I realize so any experience at all works together for good and that's how I've painted difficulties in my life yeah. it all was necessary and works together for good and it, good yeah, yeah so each each one has changed me in such a way that I've gotten a different kind of a strength or a different kind of an empathy oh also a very good very good thing to have in case you weren't paying attention <laughs> Okay, last question. This is about the 80s, not about you, since we love the 80s here. Last time you and I chatted, I asked you your favorite Bill Murray movie from the 80s. But this time, I want to know about another giant star from the 1980s. What is your favorite Molly Ringwald 80s movie? If Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink. And Molly and I hung out. We were buddies. Yep. And I actually... Um, this is the wait. Um, she was dating Zappa. What's oh, his name? Uh, 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 Moon? Moon, Moon, Unit? Moon Unit's brother. Uh, 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 not Tweezel. Tweezel. Uh, Tweezel. Molly Ringwald was dating, I'm telling, Molly Ringwald was dating Dweezel Zappa when yeah. I was friends with her. I had a sleepover at her house. I made a collage. Oh boy. I spent hours on a collage. Oh boy. That, where's the camera? That Dweezel. Molly gave you. I made it. I did all the hours of work. And since we're on the subject, sure. not that I haven't completely forgiven everything, I did loan her some clothes that I never got back. Oh my god. This is breaking news. And Ducky. Yes, the great John Cryer. We all hung out. He was he was someone that I was too shy to go out with. No! He used to ask me out. Oh. Supposed to end up with Ducky at the end of Pretty in Pink, right? Yes, she is. Of course, she is. Right? She's supposed to, right? Yes. Everybody knows that. And now, I just right? saw Charlie yeah. Sheen a couple weeks ago oh, yeah? at the New Jersey Horicon. And he looks amazing and he was oh, great. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. And he remembered me from when his dad directed me in Babies Having Babies. Amazing. And that's the only Emmy that his dad ever won, he told me. Wow. Right? That's that's incredible. Also, 11 actors, folks. Everybody knows everybody. That's it. Um, thank you so much for your time, your wisdom. Folks, a huge hand for Miss Claudia Wells. Thank you, thank you. And for the greatest interviewer on the planet, very thank you very much, Sam Levine. Oh, thank you. Back to you. Oh, exciting. It's so exciting. I want to go back.